What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension for architecture video for you. So in today's video we're continuing our series on great SketchUp extensions for architecture by checking out the BIM plugin for SketchUp plus spec. So plus spec allows you to create smart models inside of SketchUp. So these smart models actually contain information inside of the assemblies allowing you to get quantities and costs and also to make changes. So these models have a lot more information contained inside of them than a standard SketchUp model. So you can get more information about this extension and the others in my architecture extension series by visiting the sketchupessentials.com slash architecture extensions and downloading my free architecture extensions guide. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So SketchUp is a really good tool for drawing different things. Um, however, one of the things that it lacks a little bit in the base, uh, the base installation is the ability to have any kind of information associated with anything that you draw. So like for example, if I come in here and I draw a wall, like this one, and I push pull it up, and then I apply like a brick material to the face or something like that, so if I just come in here and apply a material, the problem with this is all it is is a set of faces um, that are making up a wall that looks like a wall. So it's almost like you drew a wall inside of SketchUp. However, if I come in here and start adding doors and other things like that, like there's no real way at the moment for this to have information associated with it. So for example, if I wanted this wall to change and to show like framing, or if I wanted it to have a different skin material on the outside, all I would be doing was coming in here and applying a different material, but it's not really a very smart assembly. However, plus spec is different in the sense that it allows you to draw assemblies that actually have information associated with them. So like for example, if I open up the wall tool inside a plus spec, instead of me coming in here and just like randomly drawing out a box and extruding it, you can actually pick different kinds of walls. So like for example, let's say that you wanted this to be a framed wall with like a brick veneer on the outside. There's actually options for these different things in here. This information is actually associated with the wall so that when you draw it, you actually get a wall that contains like a layer for your stud framing and then a layer for your bricks. And this one has um, a color in here for the different sheathing. So what this has is it has all of information in here for all of the different things that are actually associated with this wall. And the nice thing about this is because of the way plus spec is set up, you can actually come in here and you can make changes. So for example, let's say I wanted this wall to be something other than a brick wall on the outside of this. Well, I would just select it and pick another kind of wall. So maybe like a lightweight framed with cladding. And I could actually go down into my materials and set what kind of cladding I want. So if I want like a hardy board or something like that, you could apply that to the outside or like a lap siding or something like that. Um, all of those are in here as options. So I could go ahead and click submit on this and this is actually going to change so this is gonna change into a wall with an actual proper thickness and also like the actual cladding on the outside. So this is actually representative of what this wall might look like. And so what I wanted to do is just kind of walk you through some of the tools in here, but then also talk a little bit about some of the things that you can do with this once you're done. And I thought the easiest way to do this would be to come in here and generate just kind of a simple building. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of work our way from left to right in the tools that are inside of plus spec. So you can start off off with the floor tool and you can create a floor that actually has the proper thickness so whatever you want your floor to be in this case four inches um, you can set this to create a ground floor and you can also set if this has like a termite barrier underneath so in this case I'm gonna say no um, and then you can also set the kind of surface that's going to be on this and then when you do that all you do is you just come in here and you just model this out so let's say this was gonna go 60 feet so when I close this in, what this is gonna do is this is actually going to create my concrete slab in here. And if you look on the underside, you can also set it to automatically create things like uh, recesses and other things that are actually included inside of built buildings like this one. So once we have our slab complete, we can come in here and we can start adding our walls. And we've kind of taken a look at this, but you can adjust things like the height of wall and other things like that as well. So if you wanted these walls to be 12 feet high, you can just adjust that in here. And so we're gonna go ahead and say that this is gonna be a lightweight framed with cladding, which is what we have selected. 
And so we're just gonna close this in and this is automatically gonna draw our wall in. All right, and so now that we have our walls in here, we can start adding openings. And there's a few other interesting things you can do as well. So like for example, I can right click on one of these walls if I want to and go down to the walls function and you can actually set this to select connected walls. So if you wanted to, for example, come in here and change all of these walls at once, you could just use this tool in order to make that adjustment. So let's say for example, that I wanted all of these walls maybe to be like 14 feet. I could just type in 14 feet and click submit it, and that's actually going to come in here and that's going to adjust the height of these walls when I make that change so I don't have to go back in and um, redo all of them and so you would use the same tool in order to draw interior walls so we would just activate the interior wall tool and then within that we would just select an internal wall so that's just going to be a simple wall with studs and drywall on the face of it and then we could use this in order to place that wall so I can just click on this corner and then place another wall in here so maybe here we'll have another wall and let's say we've got a room over here. So just something really simple for right now. So obviously not an actual house design, but what we can do now is we can come in here and use the door and window tools in order to add doors and windows to our model. So I can just click on this tool and then I can use the door tool and it's telling me I need to select a wall. So we're going to select this front wall and then within the door tool, this has a number of different tools in here that you can use to create different kinds of doors. So in this case, I want to create an external door. So we'll put an external door right here and and then you can select your door type. So there's different sliding doors and patio doors. Um, in this particular situation, I just want a simple pivot door. And then all you do is you just find a place on the wall that you selected and you click and then you set the width of your door. So in this case, I'm gonna add a three foot door right here. So now I've got a door inside of this wall. And you can see how there were multiple different options in here, but the nice thing about this is this actually frames it and adds it uh, recessed into this opening. So um, it's actually recessed as if we framed it out instead of just being like a box through the wall. And so we can do the same thing for windows. So if we wanna add windows in here, we'll just click to add a window. After we select this wall, there's a bunch of different options in here depending on what you want. So different kinds of curtain walls or fixed windows or sliders, really a bunch of different things that we can include in here. So in this situation, I think I am going to set this as a folding window. And then you just do the same thing where you just set your width and your window is gonna come in here. And I believe if we use the interact tool that's included in here, you can set if these windows are open or closed. So you can use this to interact with movable objects like doors and windows in here. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll close the window and the door for right now. And I'm just gonna add in a couple more doors real quick and then we'll come back. And so now that I've created my doors, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna create a roof on top of this building. So from a height standpoint, these are all getting a little bit tall for me. So I'm just gonna go in real quick and I'm gonna select my connected walls and I'm gonna bring these down to something like uh, 10 feet or something like that. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna create a roof from these exterior walls. So in order to do that, all you have to do is just select one and then um, click the button for select connected walls. So that if you right click on this again with those walls selected and you go down to the generate button, you can set this to generate a roof from your walls. So what this is gonna allow me to do is that's gonna allow me to take these walls and generate a roof that goes around here. And you can adjust things like the different kinds of tile that go on here, what kind of roofing it is, um, the slope, lots of different things. You can add gutters and other things like that as well. So you can actually set the material that's gonna go on the outside of the roof by doing this as well. So I'm just gonna kinda leave this as is and I'm gonna click the button for submit. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna generate a roof from this face that was generated in here. So you can see how this roof was added really quickly and really easily without me having to do a whole bunch of extra work in here. And so obviously this is a very simple house, but you can see how easy it is to add things like windows and doors and then also to change them, which is great because a lot of the time when you model inside of SketchUp, uh, just kind of the old way, making changes can be a lot more challenging.
So if you look in here, you'll notice this actually models out like a gutter and other things like that as well. Um, but now, and there's some other functions in here as well. There's stair functions and structural functions. And there's also some MEP stuff. What I wanna focus on though is two things. The first is going to be generating your views so that you can create plans inside of layout. Because one of the kind of frustrating things about creating things for layout is you have to go through and do like section cuts and other things like that. Well, one of the Cool things about this extension is it's actually set up to create those automatically. So if I come in here and mouse over the scene tool, you can see how this tells me this generates scenes to aid navigation. Well, if I click on this, what this is going to do is this is going to give me options for the different kinds of scenes that I can create. So I can set these up so that it's going to create all of the different views in the library. So if you want to do that, you can do that. Um, you can also set it up for things like estimation or document creation. So just kind of depending on what you're trying to do here. I'm actually going to go ahead and set this to all just so we can kind of go through all of these. Um, you can also set if your working drawings are going to be color or semi-rendered, which I assume yeah, that includes a style and also shadows. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and set these to color. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna set the styles contained in your scenes, but I'm gonna go ahead and click submit. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna add in all of these different scenes that we can then use to create our drawings. So you can see how this added a number of different scenes in here, and you would get less if we hadn't selected all, um, but I went ahead and selected all just to show you what's in here. So there's options in here now, like for a slab plan, for example. This automatically created this where it only shows the slab. And you can also see this dotted line in here where the recess is. Um, it also created views for like your floor plan. So you can now take this and put it directly inside of layout. So you also have a roof plan, and then also elevations showing your building. And the nice thing about these is these are all kind of sized to what you want. All right, these are all kind of sized so that this is centered inside of your view, which is perfect for layout. So there's a number of views over here for plan creation. And then there's also views over here on the other side showing things like your structure. So you can see how these walls, for example, actually have the structural framing associated with them. And you could take this and you could rotate this. You can actually see the framing. Um, so it did all of this automatically without you actually having to come in and do anything. So it also sets up views if you want to create like an animation of your building. Um, this creates section cuts that run across this. So and then the other cool thing about plus spec is you can also set costs associated with these different things. So now let's go to our floor plan and if we rotate and we select one of these exterior walls, we can associate costs with all the different parts and pieces in that wall. So like for example, um, our interior jip board, we could set that to be a certain price. You could set your siding to be a certain price. So if you want your siding to be like 12 bucks a foot or something like that. You can set a cost associated with that. You can set costs for all your like Tyvek and your other things in here as well. And then once you've done this and you've saved it, you can click on this button right here for the takeoff and estimate tool. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna pop up an HTML file and so what this does is this pops up a report for all the cost data inside of your model. And you can see how I don't have costs associated with everything. So like the windows, I don't have costs or anything like that. But things like my insulation, I do. So I can go through and I can figure out what things are going to cost using the smart data inside of these assemblies. And then you can spit this out as part of a report so you can use it to do an actual estimate based on what's in your building. And one of the cool things about this is if we were to go in and make a change, so if we made this wall shorter or something like that, your costs would adjust dynamically because they're being calculated um, based on the amount of this assembly that you have inside of your model. So not only can you use this to create plans, you can also use this to create estimates. So that's from in this video. I mean, this is more of a, a professional level extension. So it is something that you're probably going to get a lot more use out of if you're actually like a design professional or a construction professional. But it does make the modeling of assemblies and making changes a lot easier inside of SketchUp. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you like plus spec, and if you're doing anything like this in SketchUp, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe 
subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.